everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and here in my catering steam pan, we have probably four cups of water with a splash of citric acid and vinegar. It is a leftover dye path, but it is high acid, and we're gonna have some fun on this double-stranded sock plank, creating a sort of gradient using some dry Dharma acid dye powder mixed with citric acid spring, er, crystals. This double-stranded sock blank is 100 grams double-stranded platinum sock from Wool to Die For. The yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and since we have two strands knit together, when you unravel this, you'll end up with two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn. If you want to learn more about the yarn or any of the materials that I'm using today, you can find affiliate links in the video description. I am not a wool to die for affiliate, but you can find more information about the pan and some of the other tools and equipment that I like to use that are affiliate links. This video almost could be classified as a leave no dye behind. This started as one quarter teaspoon of Dharma Deep Navy Acid Dye mixed with one tablespoon of citric acid powder. Uh, there is still a lot left in here. I don't know if we're going to use it all up, but my plan is to speckle lightly on this side. You can see I have part of it really scrunched up. Um, but then I'm going to layer some color here, wait, let it set, and then I'm going to move this down to the next section and sprinkle on heavier. And so I think that we'll have some really, really beautiful effects here. Since we are playing with acid dye powder, I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves while dealing with the powder. So excuse me if I sound more muffled. Oh no, I thought I was filming. Um, I realize that this powder has sugar, not uh, citric acid powder, so it will not be adding more acid. Um, and I had literally just started sprinkling on color, starting really slowly and then going a little heavier now in this midsection. It looks like I'm adding the color heavier over here than I actually did because of the way the colors bloom when it hits the water. So if I come in here and add just a tiny bit more, you could see some of that bloom of color. I'm going to reduce the heat, but you can see that we've got some thicker sort of specks over there versus some thinner specks over there. Will this be a perfect gradient? No, but we will see changes from as we add more and more speckles going further down. But I'm going to let this sit for, I think, three minutes, and then we'll come back and shift things, because I think at that point a lot of the color will have absorbed. I'm coming in now with my tongs, and we are going to start to shift things. We could still see more color come on this area that we have here on the end, but I'm not super concerned. Uh, the downturned edges I am a little, slightly more concerned about, but let's, let's move on to this. Whoop. My hands are starting to get, my hands are a little damp, so I do want to go and wipe that down. And I'm drying off my speckling hand with uh, a paper towel so that way I can get uh, some bits of powder again. But that actually looks like I went fairly heavy in that region already. I'm not going to worry about it though. We are trying to go heavier and heavier. And the color of the dye does look a little more purple until it starts setting. But the fun thing is that these little sort of waves of color in here uh, that you can sort of see from the wrinkles in the blank will make a difference in the colorway, and I think it'll be fun. But, doo -doo -doo. add some over there. Okay, let's let this sit for, uh, I'm gonna let this sit for maybe three to five minutes until I see 
that the color here along the edges has mostly absorbed. There is still a tiny bit of color around those edges, but a lot has absorbed. But mainly you can see it's looking significantly less purple in that region. Um, but honestly, I don't mind if some more color spreads. This next round, I'm going to go even heavier. Now, I think it's the moisture from the steam that is making my gloves extra, uh, extra. <laughs> Uh, so turning down the heat again should allow me to add these heavier speckles here that I want to add. And by speckles, we're doing more splotches, but since it's a blink, uh, when we unravel it, I still expect that we will see, you know, some speckles in there. Um, and actually... While we're here, I'm just going to go lightly here on the other end because I can. <laughs> and I think it'll help me see, once like that's absorbed, how much heavier I need to go down there. So, we are just going to keep adding color. I know that there's some areas there that we can't access, but when I move it, I'll also be able to really show that to you. So, all right, let's wait uh, probably another five minutes or so. Um, I am going to actually, and this is a lighter area, add some more down there. There we go. Yeah, we'll be back in about five minutes. Honestly, this is looking really, really nice. No, I mean, non-honestly. I'm lying. <laughs> I think it looks good. Okay, but let, watch as I pull this back. And that wasn't quite as dramatic as I thought it could be. Um, but you could see that we did leave um, have some resist because the colors are striking fairly shallow and fairly, fairly fast. But you can also see this gradient that we're creating here. And I don't really, really excited. Okay, this time I'm going to make sure my hands are dry already. And I'm going to turn up the heat in the back because that is where we are now going. And we are going heavy. Still going for sort of like speckled and splotched kind of thing. Maybe I'm going a little too heavy. Uh, I hope not too, too heavy, um, but, and I'm taking a larger pinch than I might normally do and just letting that fall on our yarn. And now I'm taking a lighter hand, but trying to get that edge, get this edge, make sure we see color there. And we still have a lot left over, but I do want to take care of something. Okay, we are seeing color spread, and I am trying to just block it a little bit. I don't mind if this color all strikes those edges, but I'm trying to just create a little bit, and I'll reduce this heat again, a little bit of a physical block so it stays mostly here on this edge. I feel like it comes up often that I have leftover navy dye. Um, I am going to go ahead and let this sit for 10 minutes right now. I want to go longer, but the water level is getting lower and lower, and I don't want to risk anything burning. So in 10 minutes, we'll come back and we'll start to add some more water onto uh, our yarn. But the heat is on the lowest possible setting right now. It's been 10 minutes and we are going to add some more water. I'm adding it to this end first. I don't think that there's a ton of color left at the other end. Oh, funny. As I add the water, it's like sort of stretching the blank out towards that other side. But 
I don't mind if some of that color ends up coming down. Um, I do want to add a little more vinegar. So I added maybe around three, three and a half cups. And I'm going to add one, two, three tablespoons of vinegar down at that side. It will spread out, but I wanted to leave it where I feel like it's needed the most. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit and let everything sort. Once we start seeing some movement on the surface, I'll turn it back down. But I'm going to let everything sort of sit in here for another 20 minutes. Let's take a look. Oh, funny. I was thinking that like some color hadn't absorbed, but I've actually just stained my pan. Uh, we might end up needing to like, we'll see it how well set things are, but we've got a beautiful, beautiful gradient here. I'm now going to carefully pick up this blank. Yeah, we've definitely cleared. That's just some staining. But I still have more of this color left. I'm setting our blank aside and included in that color is the color that I have been rinsing off of my fingertips this whole time. And there's another little splash of vinegar. And I'm going to add some yarn. I have been pre soaking some Knit Pick Stroll Fingering White Yarn. Um, and this is the same fiber content as the blank. Uh, you will probably see some of these colors starting to strike pretty quickly, but it doesn't matter if they're striking quickly and unevenly because we're going to add a lot more color. So I am not concerned about that one bit. Oof. Although it's hard. Whenever I'm like, okay, I'm going to add a ton of color in three, two, one, and then I create something and I'm like, ooh, but this is pretty on its own. Like, I like some of these pastels get me so excited. But, okay, we are going to add more color. I'm going to go get my mask and everything back on. Let's go. I am determined. This seems like a lot more than a tablespoon. Uh, especially because this was used before. So I have no idea. But we are going really heavy in here. Really heavy. Really, really heavy. I suppose I don't want to use it all up. Just most. <laughs> Uh, so then we can move it around and add some more. Uh, what this will do is give this, this really nice combination of some speckles and some other splotches on the yarn. I'm raising it up and flipping it. I didn't even rinse off my hands before doing so. But we're letting just this color spread out everywhere. And giving us this dark, dark kind of color line. I am drying my glove off because I don't want the sugar to like paste on me as I'm adding the color in here. But, you know, we, there will be some tonal variation in with what we have created. I am trying to pay some special attention around the ties, but this is going to be tonal and speckled and uneven, but it should just be really, really fun. And in a moment, I will move it again. And we are heating up, and I have a hint of the color left. Uh, I love these, I realize I haven't plugged these awesome nylon zip ties in a little bit. They are fantastic for adding color or for being able to easily like flip and move yarn around while you are randomly adding colors to it. As we are doing today, even if you're doing planned colors, it makes it really easy to lift up and flip the yarn over, plus it functions as an extra tie. 
Um, and you can reuse them over and over, which makes it even more awesome. Uh, you can tell that sometimes I have some that get quite pigmented from the number of times that they've gone in because you can dye nylon with acid dyes. We are getting closer. I have just a hint more. And the thing with lifting this up and moving this yarn around that is so awesome is it that it allows us to continue to add this depth to the colorway. Because since colors haven't completely struck the yarn yet, um, we get that spread, but also that splotchiness. And so I'm just trying to focus on areas that seem like they're less pigmented, but I'm not, again, super worried. This is going to be a fun, deep, deep colorway. I feel like the colors that I get left over are very, very frequently in the navy family. Maybe because I like using it for speckling, but uh, it happens a lot. I'm now wiping down the outside edge because sometimes we do end up with some pigment up there, but most of the time things do actually just land in our container. I also always wipe down the entire stove and the sides, but here's the side of the stove right next to the pan and I see very, very little pigment there. Um, and so I really like, yeah, I'm just wiping down the other side and I'm not really seeing pigment. Um, maybe one droplet again, or one droplet, but this is why I take the time to wipe everything down after I am done dyeing our yarn. But now let's move it once again. This is, Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oof, I love it. I wonder how balanced it'll feel in the end. And there's definitely still some pigment in here, but the pan is definitely stained, which usually you can get off with some Lysol or something. At this point, I'm gonna add truly scientific, that's a large splash of vinegar, and I'm going to add some more water as well. Plus another four cups of water, bringing us into a full immersion territory. Um, this, if there's like pockets of powder somewhere, will help that dissolve, and we can absorb it to the yarn and I see some really exciting things going on in there right now. All right, anyway, I'm gonna turn um, off the camera and let things sit for 20 minutes. I will reduce the heat once I see some movement on the surface. This colorway is beautifully epic. I love it, and even though it's like navy, there's parts that almost feel bright blue. Maybe not bright, but Maybe because it's like dark navy and light navy. Yeah, that has cleared. There's just some staining. Can I wipe that off? No, I'll have to clean that pan later. Um, I'm gonna let this cool in here for a tiny bit, um, but soon I'll remove it so it can cool completely and then we can wash it. The blink has cooled completely and now we can wash it. Um, I am so, so excited by this gradient that we created. And I will absolutely be unraveling this at the end of the video. But so far, so good when it comes to bleeding. I'm now going to add some clear disco. Let's take a closer look at this water. Maybe there's a tiny amount of bleeding, but all things considered, not bad. And look at the depth that we got in that saturated end. The nice thing is that I am not worried about, since I didn't leave any white behind intentionally, 
I'm not worried about like, it staining the rest of the yarn. But I will go ahead and rinse this a few more times. I, yeah, it's looking pretty clear even already. And then I will place the one square my thin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we can wash our bonus skate. I love deep saturated colors like this one. It just makes me so happy. And now we can wash it. I do want to take a tiny bit more care washing this than the blank. Um, just because there was sugar in those sprinkles. But the sugar should rinse out no problem. And so far I'm not seeing any color bleeding, which is awesome. Now when you're using sugary things, you do need to be careful. Say, sh plain sugar sprinkles are typically okay because they dissolve. But things that have other bits, like thicker sugar sprinkles, can be a little more problematic and require some extra like heat to make sure everything dissolves. So with just straight sugar, it's not a problem. Now, why do I have some, oh, that's great. There's no bleeding. I am happy. Um, why do I have dye mixed with sugar to begin with? Well, I was dyeing some yarn with some Stellina, and citric acid isn't always advisable to use with Stellina because it can cause that bright, shiny fiber to dim and lose a bit of its luster. This is not something that I have seen personally, um, and so I'm really just behaving off of anecdotal evidence um, from other indie dyers. But I figured it's not really worth the risk. And so that's one of the main reasons why I did my whole citric acid versus sugar versus salt experiment back in the day. But this is great. I am gonna rinse out the rest of the soap, put it through the skin dryer, and bring it up to dry. This blank came out so gorgeous. I am so thrilled with the ways that we have these five different shades from going super heavy all the way to super light. I never tried dyeing a portion of the blank at a time and sort of shifting it through the pan like this, but this really did allow us to achieve in one pan all of these different depths of color saturation. On the reverse side, you can see more of the, the wrinkles, those dimples from where the blank was slightly folded or scrunched up in the pan. You don't feel as many of those speckles, but it's beautiful nevertheless. Will this be a quote, true speckled gradient? No. If we wanted a more true gradient, then we could have dip dyed the blank in some medium navy to get the dark to light and then added some speckles on top. That would have given some smoother transitions with then some hints and pops and specks. But this would turn into a stunning pair of socks because when we unravel this, we're gonna get two matched 50 gram balls of yarn. We did have some more leftover navy dye behind after we finished up with this blank. And I absolutely love the sock yarn. I think dyeing saturated colors with subtle speckles are one of my favorite colorways. And I love how heavy I went in with this, and yet you can still feel the dimension and the depth in this yarn. I did use my automated skein winder to unravel this skein today. So it's not the easiest visual of what our gradient is, but we are gonna go from tiny, tiny navy speckles on a pale blue base, to then slowly, slowly increasing the total number of speckles until it gets much heavier. I love unraveling these blanks by hand, but something is also just so beautiful by watching these colors unfold on the skein winder. Here is the finished unraveled yarn. These 50 gram skeins are matched, so whatever you make, whether you want to do something symmetrical or you could alternate both skeins to sort of blend them together, you will get something gorgeous. The transitions will feel fairly subtle. The difference between the lightest shade and the darkest shade 
aren't the biggest extreme, which I think is awesome because there are those pale reverse speckles in that darkest color, which also just helps tie everything together and make it so delicious. Once I am done filming these conclusions, I am going to take our Unravel Blank, go soak it in some water to relax that crimp. Um, that crimp that we get just because it was knit up before and we did unravel it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on. You can press that bell icon to make your notifications are on, and that way YouTube will let you know when I release a new video. New videos come out every Tuesday and Friday morning. We've been doing this for over two years now, and I still have plans to keep going strong into 2020. If you want some beautiful hand dyed yarn and to support the content here on the channel at the same time, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. It's filled with hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in my videos, and so you can play with the yarn, watch how I made it, and know that you're helping contribute to the content that we are creating here. I love playing with color, and I just love how this yarn came out. I know that we have so much navy, oh, but I love that color. I think Derma Deep Navy and Frozen and True Black, yeah, those are probably three of my all-time favorite acid dye colors. What are some of your favorites? Let me know in the <laughs> let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching everyone.